Hi everyone, this is actually Lori from Kid Made Modern. I'm here with Tessa from Studio Jane today. Uh, thanks for everyone that has joined us before um, that's back to craft with us. We have a very fun Halloween craft. Um, here's just a reminder that I am going to be the moderator of the session. So if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A. Um, I'll be answering those or I'll be asking those to Tessa for you um, to make this really, really easy and give you plenty of time to craft today. All right, Tessa, uh, go right ahead. All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We are going to be making this fun spider garland today. You can see each spider is made of paper and fuzzy sticks and all the eyes that you want to add. And then we're going to string it all from yarn um, to make your own garland. So we're going to go through how to make multiple spiders and how to make the garland today. Um, and then you can make as many as you'd like. So we're go going to make four different spiders. That's how many are on this garland. You can see here that they're all hanging at different lengths. Um, and all different fun Halloween colors. So we're gonna go through the whole supply list right now and then we'll get started. All right, so the first thing you're gonna need today is paper. Um, I just have some um, like light colored cardstock or construction paper. You can use um, any paper you want. Um, if it is a little bit thicker, like a construction paper, then it will be a little bit easier to use, but you can definitely use like computer paper um, or anything like that. Paper plates even will work as well. Uh, and then we're going to use a small bowl. So I just have a small little bowl here from my kitchen. Uh, we're going to use this to trace our circles and cut out circles. So you can use any size bowl that you want, depending on how big you want your spiders. Uh, you can also just draw your own circles if you want. Uh, then I'm going to use a marker to trace our circles, um, a colored pencil, crayon, anything of the sort a pair of scissors to cut out the circles for our spiders. Um, then we're going to be using a hole puncher. And the hole punch is to attach all of our little spider legs and the little, little hole at the top to hang them. Um, if you don't have a hole punch or you are struggling to use a hole punch, if you're not crafting with an adult today, um, then you could use glue dots as well to um, stick all of your little fuzzy stick legs on instead. And then we're going to be painting our circles. So I've got all sorts of different colors here from our Kid Made Modern washable paints here that are so fun and so colorful. You can use any color you want. I have got purple and green and orange and black um, that are some of my favorite Halloween colors, but you can use other colors if you want. Um, you can make them all the same colors. So it's totally up to you. And then I've got tons of fuzzy sticks. So we've got some metallic ones, green ones, striped ones. All of these are from the Kid Made Modern Arts and Crafts Library. Uh, so pick out your favorites if you're using your library today too. If you're not, then any fuzzy sticks you have will work. Um, if you don't have fuzzy sticks or you don't have enough, then you can definitely make little paper legs or yarn legs or something like that instead. And then lastly, we're going to be using googly eyes. Uh, so I have a whole little bowl here of googly eyes. You can see here, fun colors. Uh, they're all different sizes and colors. I've got some that are also um, pre-adhesive that are on this little sheet of plastic. These again are all from our Kid Made Modern Arts and Crafts Library. So there's tons of options to do eyes. If you don't have googly eyes today or you don't think you have enough, you can always draw your own. So you can take that same marker or colored pencil that you're going to trace your circles and you could easily draw your own eyes on or you could use little pom-poms to make eyes instead. Um, so there's lots of options. And I think that that's everything. Oh, and paint brushes. Since we're using paint, you're gonna need paint brushes. Um, either one paintbrush per color or you can run to a sink and rinse out your brush in between. Uh, whatever is convenient for you guys. And I think that's everything. So I'm gonna flip this camera around so you guys can see my hands and we'll get started. Okay. So, oh, guys, I forgot something. I'm sorry, we also need yarn. So I have a whole big chunk of white yarn here. This is what we're going to string our spiders from to make the garland. Uh, you can use any color that you want, but you're gonna need yarn or twine or string of some kind. And that's if you want to make a garland. Maybe you just want to make the spiders and you can stick them around the house. You can 
stick them on the walls or um, on top of the, your a dresser in your room. So you don't have to make a garland. If you just wanna make the spiders, you can do that as well. All right, so to start, we are going to make some circles. So I have my sheet of construction paper here and I'm gonna take my little bowl. I'm gonna flip it upside down and put it right on top of my piece of paper. Again, we're gonna be making four different spiders today. So they're all gonna look basically the same, except for maybe some different color paints. Um, but we're gonna make four different ones that are all using the same technique. So if you feel like you're a little bit behind or you missed a step, we're gonna make four of them together. Okay, so once your bowl is upside down on top of your piece of paper, I'm just gonna take my marker and I'm going to trace along the outside of my bowl. And then I've got a whole circle there. And my sheets of paper are eight and a half by 11 inches, which is your standard computer paper or notebook paper size. And I can get two of this size circle, which is about six, five inches or so. You can see I've got two circles there. I'm gonna draw two more. And again, these circles, my bowl that I'm tracing is about five inches, so it makes about five inch circles, um, which makes my spiders pretty big spiders. I don't know about you, I'd be pretty scared if I saw a five inch spider, um, but you can see here, it's definitely bigger than my hand, um, but that's just the size spider that I wanted to make, so you can definitely make yours bigger or smaller. You could make it lots, lots of tiny spiders and string them on a garland instead, or just one really big spider, it's totally up to you. Especially you could make one really big one and maybe it goes on the front door or it hangs on the wall by itself. So there's lots of options. Okay, so now that we have traced our four circles here, we're going to cut them out. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and I'm just going to cut right along the line. And we are going to be painting these circles as well. So if you feel like you messed up at all or your lines, you can still see when you cut them, cut your circles out, then it'll probably get covered up by our paint. All right, there we have our first circle all cut out. And we're just gonna do the same thing for all four. And again, I'm using this construction paper, but uh, paper plates or even cardboard would work. Maybe you have a, an old box that a parent wants to give you, um, something that hasn't been recycled yet. You could definitely cut cardboard circles too um or a paper bag anything like that will definitely work so now i've cut two circles out this is just my scrap paper so i'm going to set that aside i won't use any more of that And as I'm cutting, I'm kind of cut, cutting right on the inside edge of my line, uh, just to try to cut it away a little bit. But again, you can always flip your circle over and you won't see that, or you can, once we paint it, you probably won't see your tracing line. And I think these little garlands are so fun to hang on a wall but they'd be really cute in a window too. Um, or again, if you're just making the spiders by themselves, you could put them all over the place. And obviously we're doing spiders for Halloween today. Um, since Halloween's only a couple weeks away, I'm so excited. 
but maybe you guys want to do a different little creature entirely um little bats or little pumpkins would also be cute as a garland so if you guys are making a different version of our halloween garland or different colors let us know in the q a we'd love to hear what you guys are making at home um gail actually is back and she has another great idea for us uh she's yeah. seen how, what about using pieces of foam in various colors, longer lasting and still still fairly easy to cut? They, she thinks they come in eight and a half sizes, eight and a half inch sizes. That is a great idea. Yeah, foam would be great. Then you would be really easy to store it and bring it out year after year. Um, yeah, definitely be more durable than just the paper. So smart. All right, so next we have got our little circles here and it's time to paint. So if you're not painting your circles, if you want to just keep them whatever color your paper is, you can definitely just use colorful construction paper instead. Um, or you might just want to make your spiders, if you're using white paper or paper plates, then your spiders can just be a natural color as well. Totally up to you. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and paint mine. So I'm going to take my first shade here. I'm going to use this Kidman Modern Violet. It's a pretty purple color. And I just put an extra sheet of paper here underneath and I'm going to paint my circle. So you can see here, probably hard to, see. got a little blurry here, hang on. Hard to see with that paper, the same color. You can see here, I'm just taking my paintbrush, dipping it right into my little jar of paint and then just painting all across the whole circle. I'm just painting all the way to the edge and kind of taking my brush and expanding past the edge to get all of it covered. And paper, when it gets wet, which is what happens when you paint it, it starts to curl. So you can see my little circle here is starting to curl. And that's okay. Once it dries, it'll we'll lay it flat and it will dry flat. So if yours starts to curl or bend, don't worry, it'll dry flat. So you can see here my little circle once I paint it on. I put a little scrap paper underneath, or maybe you have a tablecloth, or you have a craft table you're working on, um, then you can paint directly on your surface. So I've got my first purple circle ready to make a purple spider. I'm gonna set that over here, let that dry. And we'll move on to our next one. So my next, let's do an orange, which fitting Kid Made Modern's orange color, it's called pumpkin, perfect for the season. And it's a fun, bright orange, which I love. So you can see, just paint directly on here. And if you don't have uh, our Kid Made Modern paint, which is what I'm using today, that's all washable, which is great. Uh, you can definitely use other paint, or again, you can um, use other colorful papers that you might already have that you don't need to paint. You could use crayons or colored pencils as well. One of our watchers is using Halloween themed paper pad peekaboo from last year's collection. Oh, so cute. That's a great idea. We um, absolutely believe in saving craft supplies because you always can use it in the future. Oh, a hundred percent. Even those little scraps of paper that are left over from the circles we just cut, keep them. It's so fun to have all these different colors of paper or um, pattern paper that then you can pull out for different crafts or making a gift. So yes, I save it all. Okay, next we've got a Kid Made Modern avocado color. I'm gonna do a green spider. And for mine, since I'm using a light color um, construction paper, 
I'm just going to do like one coat of paint that that covers it really well. Um, but if you're using cardboard or maybe a darker construction paper, you might want to let yours dry and do a second coat. Um, but that's totally up to you. All right, and lastly, our last circle here, and we'll do our midnight, a little black, maybe black widow spider. And again, I'm just quickly painting these little circles. So since they're just solid color, not doing any crazy patterns with them. So it goes pretty fast to paint them, but you can definitely do patterns if you want or polka dot spiders or paint um, checkerboards or anything else. So maybe your spiders are wearing a costume and you wanna paint them something totally fun or silly, that is a great idea too. Okay, so all four of our circles are painted and they are drying. So while they dry, we're gonna let them dry for a moment here. But while they dry, we're going to go ahead and cut all of our little fuzzy sticks to size. So I'm going to set these over here. You'll see here even this purple one that we painted first compared to the green one. It's already starting to flatten out as it's drying. So it'll dry pretty quickly here and then we'll be able to start attaching fun decorations. And look at once we painted all of our circles on here. Got a fun little abstract artwork from all of our fun paint colors. So maybe you can do something with your scrap paper too. Okay. So next we've got fuzzy sticks galore here. And you can do any color you want. Maybe you only have one color at home. Um, that's fine. All your spiders can have the same color legs. Or again, you can use um, like paper straws, you could use just paper, uh, anything else that you come across will work. What's fun about these is we're going to be able to bend our little legs into fun little shapes, but you can definitely do just straight legs as well. So if you are using a different material than fuzzy sticks today, um, then it might not bend and yours will still look absolutely adorable. You also don't have to bend your fuzzy sticks. If you want them to just be straight, then that is fine too. All right. So for each spider, you're going to need either two large, or I'm sorry, you're going to need four large um, fuzzy sticks, or you're going to need eight small ones. So we're going to cut these in half to make our little legs. So if I take my large fuzzy stick, um, that's sort of the standard size fuzzy stick, it's about a foot long, we're going to cut it right in the middle. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and cut. And there is a little tiny piece of wire inside fuzzy sticks and that's what makes them bendable, which is great. But sometimes it can be a little tricky to cut as well. So what I like to do is take my scissors and put your fuzzy stick back toward the back of your scissors. The further in it goes, the easier it is. If it's right on the tip, sometimes it can slip out. Um, it can bend around your scissors instead. So if you pull your fuzzy stick further into your scissors, make sure your fingers are away, and then you can just cut right in half. All right, so we're gonna cut few different ones. I'm going to do one with all green legs. So you want a total of eight little spider legs. So either 
eight small pieces if you already have them pre-cut small like these ones here that are in the library the kid made modern uh, library the size already or cut four in half to make a total of eight small ones so i'm going to do one with half silver and half black legs i'm going to do one with green legs and then we've got orange here so we're going to cut these in half as well And I'm not measuring it. I'm just kind of eyeballing the middle of it. So when I say eyeballing, I'm just looking at it and getting an idea of what the middle is. Um, you could definitely bend it in half if you want. So if you want to be really precise about the middle, you could take your fuzzy stick and bend it in half. If you make sure that your ends line up and then kind of pull it tight, then you'll know with that little hole that you just made, little loop, that's gonna be directly your middle. There's all of our orange ones. So again, if you want to, you can fold it in half, line up both ends together, and then this little loop, you can go ahead and put your scissor blade right there and cut it in half. Or again, you can just get a, a rough idea, an estimate of what the middle is. Since we are gonna be bending these or coiling them to make our little spider legs, then it won't really be noticeable if one's a little longer than another one. All right, so there we have our orange and black stripey fuzzy sticks as well. And then I'm just gonna count these out since these ones are already pre-cut to size. I'm gonna use four silver and four black. I'm gonna do every other one. So we're gonna make that together. So you'll see in a minute, but just to give you another option of how you might want to customize your spiders. So now we have four different little chunks, um, little bundles of fuzzy sticks um, or a little bundle of legs. We're gonna make all of these into little spider legs. And to do that, we are going to bend them. So I showed you briefly, but the way we're going to attach them is through a hole. So we have our little holes here that we're going to hole punch and then we can bend our fuzzy stick into the hole to attach it. So we want to leave a little extra on one end that's gonna be easy for us to put in the hole and twist it to hold it onto our spider circle. So I'm going to start, uh, this is about an inch or so in, I'm just going to hold it and then bend my little fuzzy stick down at an angle and then move down a little bit further and bend it the other direction going up. And then back down and then back up. And that makes kind of looks like a little W, just a little zigzag. So we're gonna do that a few more times here. So again, I'm gonna hold it about an inch or so in, that way I have a straight edge here that's gonna be easy to uh, attach it to my spider circle. I'm going to just hold it and push it down and then move down a little bit and then go back up, back down and back up. And you can make your little legs as many zigzags as you want. So if you want to make it more ziggy, then you can easily just bend it closer together. Hey Tessa, someone asked um, if they can cut two at a time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would try it. You should be able to, um, but if you are struggling, um, then you your little fuzzy sticks might bend and get caught in your scissors instead. But yeah, you should be able to cut two at a time. I love efficiency.
All right, so we're doing all of our little zigzag legs here. And again, you don't have to do this step. You could definitely uh, just leave them straight if you want. We can do one that way if you want. If you guys want to see that, um, we can also do a a little coil leg, which I didn't do in the example, but I think that could be cute too. So I'll show you guys how to do wrap a little coil if you want to see that. And again, if you are still painting or you're still cutting, um, we've got a lot of little legs here that we're going to uh, bend so you'll catch up. But you guys can just see all these steps over and over again. Hey, Tessa, Isaiah is asking, how do you get these ideas? <laughs> oh, that's a great question. Um, well, I do a lot of research for fun ideas. I try to look up different ideas and then make them kind of my own. So I go online. Um, I use Pinterest for some of you. Maybe your, your parents might know Pinterest very well. Um, you can get some fun ideas that way. Um, some of them are ideas that I remember making a version of when I was a kid. Um, and sometimes you see different decorations that are pre-made, but are made for adults and kind of customize them in fun ways that are going to be more, um, are going to be easier for you guys to make um, or use some more fun, colorful materials and make something like little birdhouses, but with materials from the kits or um, like this little spiders, but using all of these fun materials from the arts and crafts library. So kind of a little bit of everywhere. But that's a great question. All right, so I'm continuing to fold our little legs into little zigzags. And again, I'm keeping this edge here a little bit straighter so that I know that I'll be able to attach that to our little spider circle. You can see here, they are starting to be lay flat. This, look at that green one. It was almost folded in half. It was so, oh my camera keeps losing focus here. Sorry guys, hang on. Made it worse. There we go. Okay, but you can see this green circle. It was almost folded in half. It was so curled up from the paint. And now look, it's flat. So if yours is still curly, don't worry, it will lay flat in a minute. Great. Tessa, have you always been a good crafter since you were younger? Um, I've always loved crafting. My mom is a big crafter, so I started crafting very young and always had lots of art supplies and made a lot of different crafts from a very young age. But yeah, I've always loved it. So even school projects, mine were probably always a little overboard because I couldn't help myself. They had to have glitter and mats on every photo and uh, all sorts of fun <laughs> details that I still do to this day. <laughs> So yes, I've loved it since I was all of your guys' age. And it never faded. And I get to do fun stuff like this now with all of you. And I do lots of different crafting and art projects um, for my job now. So if you love doing crafts, you can make money doing it one day. Um, lots of fun things, but it also is fun just to do for yourself. So. I do some projects for myself and some projects for work. All right. Um, and then I think for this green legs, I'm going to do a little coil instead of a bend. So I'll show you guys that. I know if you've crafted with us before, we've made little 
um, coil or little curly ones before. So you probably have done this in the past, but I'll show you that too. What about you, Lori? Have you always been a, a crafter? I'm going to say no on that <laughs> one. <laughs> Um, but I love to see what people come up with. Um, and I love to see the ideas when, um, when we work on these Michaels classes, uh, with, uh, Tessa from studio Jane, it's always fun to say, Hey, we want a Halloween idea. And she comes up with some different ideas for us. So it's really, really fun, um, to kind of pick through and under, and like hear other people's ideas. Yes. Yeah. Coming up with fun with ideas is always one of my favorite parts of crafting. So, um, seeing something and then kind of making it your own is fun. Okay, so now we've got all sorts of zigzags. You can keep zigzagging if you want, or I'm gonna show you one other option if you wanna do little curly legs instead. Again, you can totally do straight legs. You don't have to do either of these, um, but I'm going to hold the edge of my fuzzy stick between my finger and my thumb. And then with my other hand, I'm just going to wrap it around the tip of my finger and then I'll pull it straight. So it just kind of gives it a little coil, a little spiral. We'll still be able to on one end here, bend it around to attach it, just to give a different little texture or style, if you will. But again, these are all optional. You don't have to do any of these options. You can just attach them, which we're going to start in a second. Uh, you can attach your fuzzy sticks, just straight legs as well. Um, Ashley has a compliment for you. She loves crafting with you, Tessa. Oh, thank you. I love crafting with you. It's so fun. And I love seeing, seeing what you guys make when you guys uh, share pictures with us. Then I get to see what your version turned out like. And getting to know you guys that way or hearing what colors or your favorite things about a craft or a holiday. It's so fun. If anyone wants to follow Tessa and her Instagram and her business, uh, she can be found on Instagram at, at shop studio Jane. So if you also, I know we talked about some hashtags in the chat um, that we would love to have you post your pictures to, but also Tessa loves to see your stuff as well. So feel free to tag at shop studio Jane or just check out her Instagram to see some of her fun creations that she makes. Yes, thank you. Yes, I love to see what you guys do. All right, so now we've got all of our little piles of legs here. We've got zigzags, we've got stripes, we've got metallics, we've got curls. So any and all are totally great, depending on what style you wanted to make. And so next we're going to start attaching our legs. So I'm gonna start with my first circle here. I'm gonna move all these aside a little bit. Your circles should be about dry. So I'm gonna start with, uh, these ones are, I'll start with the purple that I did painted first. Um, and then we'll finish with the black one. You can see here, it still is a little bit curly, a little bit curved, so it's still kind of drying. And if yours isn't exactly perfectly flat, that's fine too. Your spider might have a little bit of a, a wave to it and that's great. Okay, so next we're gonna use our hole punch. So the hole punch here, if you guys haven't used one before, um, but you're using one today for the first time, then they're really easy to use, especially these were just punching holes into a single piece of paper at a time. So I'm gonna do is take my hole punch and put my piece of paper right in between the little uh, mouth of it. I'm just going in like half an inch or so and then punching a hole. You can see there, now I have a little hole. I'm going to do that four times on both sides of the circle. So once you put your paper in the mouth of the, the little mouth end here, you're just going to squeeze until you hear it click. And then you've got little holes. And if you don't have a hole punch today, or it's not a tool that maybe you're um, parent or guardian wants you to use, then you can definitely glue these on and I can show you that option as well. 
Okay, so once you have four holes on both sides, then I'm going to right at the top as well in the middle, I'm going to punch one more hole. And this hole at the top is to um, hang on the garland. So at the end, you should have a total of nine holes. So you have four on one side, four on the other, and one right at the top. Again, okay, so if you don't have a hole punch and you're not going to punch holes, you can start attaching your legs by um, with glue. So I would use glue dots, um, which are the little shiny um, little glue circles here. And you could put one glue dot on each end of your leg and then just glue it straight to the back of your paper instead. So it's totally up to you. Uh, I think that's fun to try different methods and techniques or use a new tool. So if you haven't used a hole punch, it's also great um, parents out there that this is more mess free. There is not glue, uh, which is fun. So you can do it either way though. You can definitely glue your legs directly onto the back and they would just stick out like this. So you could glue them on like this instead. So you could do both, you could do some um, one way or another. Okay, so we've got our first one here. We're gonna go ahead and attach the legs onto this one and then we'll punch the holes in the next. So for this one, I'm gonna do black and silver legs. And I'm just gonna take my leg, I'm going to push it through the hole, the first hole, and then bend it together and then twist. So I'm gonna do this a couple times. So if you missed it, don't worry. Let's see, now we've got one leg attached here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of the little legs here and then go right into one of the holes and then you're gonna bend it flat so it already is kind of holding on and then just twist. And we twist it together and then it will hold on. All right, I'm going to do two little black legs. I'm going to do two silver legs. And you can use any color that you want, or you can use a mixture of colors. We're starting to get legs. We're starting to look a little bit like a spider. This again, just push your little end of your leg into the hole and then fold it kind of flat onto itself and then twist the two ends together. So this kind of locks it in place that they're not going to fall off, but they're still kind of movable, which is fun too. So spider seems a little bit alive. Okay, so now on this side, I'm going to do the opposite. So since I did two black at the top, I'm going to do two black at the bottom, and that way they're kind of opposite ends of one another. And just doing the exact same technique over and over again. So once you get it once or twice, you become a pro and you can just start attaching all your legs. All right, so there we have eight legs on our spider. And we're going to go ahead and do each spider's legs first, and then we'll go back and we'll attach all the eyes. Okay, so back to hole punching here. I'm going to do four. And then we'll do it on the other side as well. And then I'm hole punching one more hole at the top. And that will be how we hang it. So if you don't want to hang your spiders today, if you don't want to make a garland, then you don't have to. You don't have to put that last little hole at the top. 
Um, or if you aren't using a hole punch, but you still want to um, make a garland, you could definitely just glue or tape the yarn to the back of your spider and still make a garland. All right, let's see here. So we make an all green spider. Take little green legs here. Again, I'm just gonna take the edge of my fuzzy stick, push it right into the hole, bend it so that it's flat. And then I'm just going to twist the two little ends that are overlapping now together. And that holds it in place. And these ones, you can see some of the legs look a little longer than others. And I think that that looks fun and different. So if some of yours aren't cut exactly the same length, that's fine. They don't have to be. You can always go back around at the end and trim them if you want to. But you know, I don't think spider's legs are all the same length anyway. So I think a lot of them have, they have like longer legs in the front, I think. So you can, maybe yours are, purposely different lengths. All right, so again, we're just twisting once we fold our little fuzzy sticks together. Fold it and then twist. And if your little legs start to get caught on one another, it'll happen. Just pull them apart. So now we've got two little spider legs and hole punching our third spider in our pumpkin orange. You can see on my circles, I'm just leaving like, a maybe a half an inch between each one, um, but I'm not measuring it. So I'm just kind of trying to have about the same distance between each hole. All right, for this one, we'll do orange legs. And we're just gonna do the same thing. Push the fuzzy stick through the hole, bend it flat and then twist. And when you're twisting, you wanna make sure that you're twisting the two pieces together. So once you push this edge through, you fold it flat. So now these two pieces are kind of overlapping and then twist it and that holds it in place. And if you didn't bend all of your fuzzy sticks yet, maybe you were still cutting or painting uh, and you didn't do all your little zigzags, you can definitely twist them all on first and then you can bend them into zigzags or little uh, curls afterward. Um, we mostly did them first so that way we could do that while our paint was drying, but you could definitely bend them afterwards. So if you decided, you know what, I do wanna add some fun little zigzags, then you could do it now. All right, our last one, our little black spider here. And someone's at saying, can you please go slow? I got confused on the leg part. Yeah, and I'll go slow on this last one here. Okay, so for our last spider here, we've got four holes on either side. So I punched four. And your fuzzy stick should be cut in half now. So if you're still cutting, go ahead and cut your fuzzy stick in half. 
so that it's only about five or six inches long. And then we're going to take one end of the fuzzy stick and put it into the hole. So you can see the fuzzy sticks now like on the back side of my spider. So I'm going in and up through the hole. And now I'm going to hold it with one hand and then this little tail that's through the hole, I'm going to go ahead and bend that down. So now this little tail is bent down on top of the other fuzzy stick that's coming, the other portion of the fuzzy stick that's coming out the back. And I'm gonna hold those two portions together and twist it together. And since there's wire in there, as we twist it, that creates a little bond that it holds on to. So I'm gonna do that again. So again, taking our fuzzy stick, put it up through the hole, and then bend that little tail that's sticking out through the hole flat on top of the fuzzy stick and then holding the little tail portion here and the main portion of the fuzzy stick together and twist. And then once you get it, it might take a couple of tries uh, to get it to bend and twist and but once you do, then it's going to go like really fast because it's just using the same um, little technique over and over again. So again, I'm going to take the one end of my fuzzy stick, push it in through the hole from one side, and then just bend it flat so that it's overlapping the rest of the fuzzy stick and then twist. and then do the same for all eight legs. And you can do less legs if you want. Maybe your spider only has a couple legs and that's okay. So you can, you can just do three legs on either side if you want to, or if you're running out of fuzzy sticks or you're um, just don't want to make that many, you don't have to, it's totally up to you. All right, these last two again. Show you here, so we've got our fuzzy stick, we've got the one little end here. We're gonna push it up through the little hole we just punched and then press it. So you're bending it together so that it lays flat. So now I've got this little tail piece here. You see that? And then the rest of my fuzzy stick. And the paper should be connected and like stuck in the middle now. And then we're gonna twist those two pieces together. Just like two, maybe three twists is all you need to kind of lock it in place. So for our last leg here, again, take your fuzzy stick end, push it through, and then fold that little tail down flat onto itself, and then twist together. Emily is making seven. Wow, your garland is going to be quite impressive, Emily. And I think that is a great idea. Yeah, you can make as many spiders as you want. So you can make seven, which I think is really going above and beyond. And I love that. And you can make a ton of little ones. These are, I think would even be great little cards or gifts for maybe your classmates or friends. So instead of attaching them to a garland, you could just write a cute note on the back. Uh, so you put them in the mail, send them to grandma, grandpa, a friend. So there's all sorts of fun things to do with your spiders. All right. So now we've got all four of our spiders here that are painted and their legs are attached. Next, we get to add eyes. So with the googly eyes, they're, I think, always a, a favorite of everyone. And I'm going to be using glue dots today. So again, I showed these earlier, if you want to use these to attach your fuzzy stick legs instead of hole punching them. Um, but you can get glue dots at Michael's or um, you can get uh, in the um, Kid Made Modern Arts and Crafts Library. Uh, usually they have like a little sheet of them in there or most of our Kid Made Modern um, kits. So if you're using one of those, you might have a little sheet. You can also use glue as well. So if you don't have glue dots, you can definitely use 
just regular craft glue. There's a bottle of craft glue in Kidman Modern Library, and you just put a little dot of glue um, on the back of each eye. But today we're just gonna use glue dots here. So I'm gonna take an eye, flip it upside down and push it right onto the glue dot and then just press it right onto the bottom of my spider. So this is gonna be the top where the hole is. That's how we're going to attach it to our garland. I'm gonna do the eyes down on the other end. So you can, again, make as many eyes as you want. Definitely make it your own. Some spiders have tons of eyes. Some only have a couple. So I don't think they all have the same amount. So you can make as many as you want. And also, I've never seen a spider with sparkly legs. So I think we are kind of getting creative. And you can make your spider look however you want to, to today. And I'm doing all sorts of different colors. So these all came from the Arts and Crafts Library. So you can mix and match different colors, or if you just have uh, traditional black and white googly eyes, and that's great too. Hey Tessa, just a time check for you. We have about eight minutes left today. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and we're going to, I'm gonna speed through adding some googly eyes on here. Again, you can add as many as you want. And if you're gluing them, it might take a little moment for them to dry. Um, or sometimes you might have a pre-adhesive googly eyes, which I have some here too. Those already have sticky on the back, which is great. You can just stick them right on. And again, we're gonna bust through this last little step, but it's pretty simple. I think you guys have probably done it before. We've all used our googly eyes. So just put a little bit of glue or a single glue dot on the back of each eye and then stick it directly onto your paper circle. All right. And it's so fun to watch these come together. We started just as boring gray paper and now they are colorful and sparkly and full of eyeballs. So it didn't look like much and now we're ending with a full spider family. All right, get a couple more on here. Last eye. Now we've got our fun, crazy spiders all together. So our last step is going to be making them into a garland. And to do that, we're going to use our yarn. So I have a whole little spool of white yarn here. You can use any color you want, but I'm going to cut a long strand. So I'm gonna pull it a couple of times here to make a long strand about three feet or so. And then we're going to cut four smaller pieces. So I'm gonna cut four pieces that are about a foot long. And this is gonna be how the spiders hang from the longer strand. And I know we're kind of rushing through the end of this guys and I'm sorry um, if you are not sure how to do this last step, it is definitely gonna be recorded as um, we mentioned, so we can always watch it again later. But basically what we're going to do is take our longer piece here. I'm gonna lay that down. And then all four of these smaller pieces of yarn I cut, we're going to attach to the top hole. So I'm gonna push my yarn through the top and then tie a double knot. So just make a little loop and pull through. And then we're going to do the exact same thing on the other end of the smaller piece of string, but onto the larger piece of string. So now I'm just going to tie a double knot around my yarn as well. And then these spiders can hang straight down. 
You can see that there. We've got a double knot attached to the hole of our spider and a double knot attached to the top of our long piece of yarn. You can trim off any extra little bits here to clean that up. And that's how we're going to attach all four of these. So I'm gonna take my next spider here, push my yarn through the top hole that we punched out, and then go ahead and tie a knot at the top. And I always do a double knot. I think that's gonna be the most secure. And then we'll do the same thing on the next one. I'm just spacing them a little ways apart from one another. You can see here's my first one and here's my second one. So they're about a foot or so, um, but you can make them as close or as far apart as you want. You can also do these connecting strings, differing lengths. So you can see here, the green spider is going to hang a little higher up than the purple spider. And that is just kind of a fun way to do it. So you can make them all exactly the same or you can cut them all different lengths. That is up to you. All right. Get this last one on and I'll flip my camera around here for you guys so you can see it all together. Again, you're just going to tie each one directly on. And you can use any string or yarn you want. Um, I chose white yarn kind of looks like a spider web, which the goal that they kind of look like they're webbing down from the garland, but you don't have to do white. So you could do a different color that maybe matches your other Halloween decorations, but just tie each one on. And then you can see all four of our little spiders here are connected. Can we flip this around so I can hold it up? And you guys can be doing the same thing at home. And all of our spiders here are all connected on our fun little garland. You can always paint the backs of them as well if you want. But once it's hanging on the wall, they'll all hang flat. And you've got little legs and fun spiders for days. So I had so much fun crafting with you guys. We are going to be back in a couple of weeks before Halloween. Um, next, we're going to be making this fun Halloween crown together. So I think that it's got all the same colors we've been using to celebrate Halloween together. Um, we'll be back on Saturday the 30th to make this cute little crown with all of our fun little colors and details. And I can't wait to craft with you guys again soon. Uh, so happy spider making and happy Halloween.